from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is the hotel operator. Ready with your call, Mr. Dollar. Oh, good. Police Department, Sergeant Peters. I want to talk to somebody in the personnel division. Uh, Sorry, I haven't got one. What can I do for you? I want to get some information about a gun, find out who it was licensed to and so on. Uh, Come down to licensing division. I think we can help you there. Where's that? Uh, 220 City Hall. Do you have the weapon? Uh, yes. Be sure and bring it along with you. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Special Investigator Johnny Dollar for personal reasons. Location, Vicksburg, Virginia. Purpose? Well, it all started as an investigation of a burglary at the Plantagen Hotel. Once that was out of the way, I happened to run across a girl having an argument with a man in the hotel parking lot. She asked me to help her. I did. Girl suddenly gets sick and dies. Poisoned. I stay around to help find out who she is. I don't know that. But I do know that she had a 38 in her purse. Three bullets recently fired. Expense account item eight, two dollars, cab fare, from the Plantagen Hotel to two miles into Vicksburg City Hall and room 220 as per instructions of Sergeant Peters. I felt more than a little guilty bypassing Lieutenant Jim Akins, who had questioned me earlier about the case. Yes? Sergeant Peters? That's right. Can I help you, sir? I hope so. I'd like to know if this gun's been registered with you people. Let's have a look. Hmm. You just buy it? Uh, yeah. Got your bill of sale with you? Well, do you have to have one? You should. Who'd you buy it from? Oh, a fellow I met in a bar. Have you a permit to carry this weapon? Oh, no, I haven't. Are you going to carry it? Oh, no, no. no. Then why'd you buy it? Oh, I just wanted it, that's all. Is there a law against that? No, no. But there's a law against practically every other thing about a gun. You want to read those numbers off to me? Sure. JJJ-4769-992. And then there's an X. Okay. Make, Colt, caliber, 38, automatic, seven shot. Yeah. Here, you'll have to fill this out. Pencil's over there. This will take a minute for me to check. It took 15 minutes. In the meantime, I filled out the form which notified the Vicksburg police that I was in possession of the above-described weapon, that I did not wish to apply for a permit to carry it, and so forth and so forth. After that, I stood around and smoked a cigarette and wondered if I should step downstairs and tell Lieutenant Jim Akins that I had found Jane Doe's purse and the gun. But before I had time to make up my mind... Here we go. The gun was purchased in 1950 by the Piedmont Banking Service. That's a local armored truck outfit over on Maple Street. The gun was permitted for carrying to Raymond W. O'Connell, 232 Polk Street, this city. Thanks. Raymond O'Connell? Yeah. Anything else? Well, that's all. Thanks. That was when I could have, but didn't, walk downstairs to Lieutenant Aiken's office. Instead, I walked outside with a gun in my pocket and the slip of paper containing the name and address of the man who had carried it, Raymond O'Connell. Expense account item 9, $25. Deposit on a rented car to get me to 232 Polk Street. You're early. I'm hardly ready. Hello. Oh, I was expecting someone else. I'm so sorry. You're not Paul, are you? No, I'm afraid not. My name's Johnny Dollar. Oh. Mr. Dollar? That's right. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Dollar? I'm looking for Raymond O'Connell. Ray? Yes. Come inside, Mr. Dollar. Thank you. I really didn't mean to throw myself at you at the door. I thought you were someone else I'm expecting. Uh, I'm Terry. Terry? 
Teresa. Terry O'Connell, Mr. Dollar. Oh, his wife? I'm Ray's widow. What? Ray's dead, Mr. Dollar. He passed away over a year ago. It was pneumonia. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. O'Connell. Please call me Terry. You had no way of knowing about him, I'm sure. And please don't be uncomfortable. A great many of Ray's friends from the service come by who have no idea that he's dead. Were you in his company, too? Oh, just a minute, Mrs. O'Connell. I he think you He had you're... so many friends and met so many people while he was in the service, and really there was no way for you to you know. You don't understand, Mrs. O'Connell. I never knew. I'll get you a drink and we'll talk. Where did you serve with Ray? You know, he finally became a pilot. What do you like to drink? She was young and dark and very pretty. And as the widow of a man who died rather suddenly, she was doing her best to put me at my ease. I would have told her I was there checking out the registration on a 38 that had been used by her dead husband. I would have told her I found the gun in the purse of an unidentified dead girl I'd met the night before. But she was trying to be polite, mistaking me for a friend of her dead husband. And then I saw the picture in the frame on the mantel, a broad smiling face that belonged to a man I'd met in the parking lot of the Plantagen Hotel. An unidentified man who had been arguing with the dead girl. The words on the picture said, To Terry, all my love. You know him? Paul? Paul? Yes, Paul Dameron. I think I met him once. I really didn't know his name. Was he a friend of your husband, of Ray's? Oh, no. No, he never knew Ray. He's a darling, Mr. Dollar. Paul is. A real darling. After Ray died, I tried something very foolish. I tried to end my life. And then Paul came into it. He's been very lovely to me. We're... Well, I don't know why I shouldn't tell you. We're going to be married. I think that's fine, Terry. Do you really? Sure. I'm glad you say that. I'm not the most courageous person in the world. I suppose Ray mentioned our lives together. It was perfect with Ray, Mr. Dollar. Perfect. But now Ray's gone... And I've been able to face that. I think I'm going to find a new life with Paul. You must meet him. He'll be here soon. We're dining out tonight. Well, perhaps you'll join us. Well, thank you, Mrs. O'Connell, but I, I can't make it tonight. How long will you be in Vicksburg? I don't know exactly. Where are you staying? The Plantagen Hotel. Well, perhaps I could give you a ring and we could make it another night. I know you want to talk about Ray. Of course, Paul understands. I'm sure he does. He's truly a wonderful person. He hadn't looked very wonderful the night before, standing in the parking lot arguing with a girl who had died. But then that was my side of the picture, and it wasn't complete. And somebody still had to explain the 38 with the three bullets missing. I left Terry O'Connell, went outside and bought an evening paper, and then sat in my rented car reading it. The photographer at the morgue had done a good job. The unidentified girl's picture was on page one. I was reading the story over a second time when a dark business coupe pulled up behind me and Paul Dameron got out, heading for Terry O'Connell's doorway. Just a minute. What? Just a minute. Hello, Paul. What? You? Yeah, me. Now look, Dameron. What are you doing here? How'd you know my name? Or are you some professional gunsel coming around to sock me again? I still oh, don't... stop know. it, will you, Dameron? My name's Johnny Dollar. I want you to tell me who that girl was last night in the parking lot. The one you had the big argument with. Huh? Oh. Well, you were the big hero there, butting in where it was none of your business. I didn't like it then, and I... All right, simmer down, will you? Who was she? Come on, what's her name? What's it to you? Walk Dameron. Uh, Okay, okay. It's Amy. Amy Duran. Amy Duran. Yeah. We work at the same office. Now, look, Buster, I'm not afraid of you, but I... I don't want any trouble, see? So if you'll just go somewhere else and Wait mind... a minute, will you? How does Amy Duran tie in with Teresa O'Connell? Look, I don't know who you are or what you're after, but you've certainly got your nerve about... Answer me, Paul. Okay, okay. Terry is Amy's sister. Satisfied? I don't know. Who are you, anyhow? A policeman or something? My name is Johnny Dollar. I'm here because, because of... Because that... if you aren't, I want to know what right you have to ask me all these questions. Cool off, will you? I've been trying to find out who she is. 
Because last night after you went off, we had a drink together. Then she got sick and I took her to a hospital. She died there. What? She died. She's lying in the morgue right now, unidentified. It was some kind of poison that killed her. Amy... dead? No, I don't believe it. Here. It's in the paper tonight. The police are trying to identify her right now. I... I can't believe it. Poison. Oh, Dollar, I, I, I didn't think Amy was that desperate. There was a way out. She could have solved it without this. Way out of what? It... There was no need for her to do this. I told her I'd help her. I had no idea she... Poison. Does Terry know? Not yet. I, I've got to tell her before she sees it like this in the newspaper. It'll be awful for a dollar awful. Look, I apologize for the way I've acted. The way I was last night, I... I was upset. I can see now you're trying to help. Now, let me go in and break this to Terry. Call me later. Here. My card. Call me. I had to admit that Paul Dameron's concern seemed as genuine as his surprise. He rushed up to be admitted to the O'Connell house. After he was inside the door, I went back to my car and took out the 38 automatic that had led me to the sister of Amy O'Connell. Three bullets still missing. I drove downtown to the Vicksburg police station to turn the gun into Lieutenant Akins and tell him the whole story as I knew it. How I'd found the gun in the dead girl's purse. How I'd managed to find out her name. The three missing bullets and other unanswered questions were up to the police. Yeah, well, I... I... Oh, hi, Dollar. Thought you'd left town. Joe? All right, Joe. As soon as they clear that place up, you notify the lab. Hi, Lieutenant. All I'm right. trying to get to you. I think I have something that better be looked into. Oh, really? Oh, excuse me. Lieutenant Akins. Yeah. On the south side of the Yeah. Right. Yeah, what? Well, well, in about 15 minutes. Right. I'm sorry, Dollar. What was it you were saying? Why all the hustle? Something big? Oh, a homicide. Happened yesterday sometime. Yeah? Who got it? Guy named Belden. Somebody shot him three times with a 38. <laughs> Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, information about the gun that blows the whole case sky high. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> <laughs> 